Hello, I'm Paige Howard, and you are watching Mr. Media. Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to Cooking Channel personality Eden Grinchpan, host of Eden Eats. Stick around, and please keep your feet out of the aisles as the flamenco dancers go by. Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience of home chefs who would like Eden to teach them the ways of the poppy seed in the new media capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. I wanted to get to know Eden Grinchpan a little bit better before today's interview, so I did what any modern journalist would do. I searched YouTube. Now, if you haven't met the host of the Cooking Channel series, Eden Eats, which airs Fridays at 10 p.m., do what I did and search Eden Grinchpan on YouTube. And look particularly for a video simply titled with her name. It's a uh, 7 minutes and 52 seconds of personal charm and food delights from around the world. All right, go ahead. Do it now. Uh, we'll wait. So you're back? Great. Wasn't that cool? All right. So I was interested in talking with Eden because on a recent uh, episode of Eden Eats, uh, she invaded my adopted hometown, Tampa, to sample our culinary delights. Sorry, Darth. My only issue with the whole thing is this. On the website for this episode of her show, the cooking channel, and notice I'm not blaming Eden for this, but the cooking channel says Tampa was, quote, once a small fishing village. Now, I've heard it called many things over the 35 years of being a resident, my 35 years of being a resident here. Uh, the Cigar City is pretty common. Um, also, it's been called the Big Guava. But never, never a small fishing village. Matter of fact, while we're talking, uh, the Republican National Convention is going on in Tampa, and probably... I don't think anyone over there is thinking of it as a small fishing village. But what I think that they meant, just to be, be on target here, was Tarpon Springs, which is a small Greek fishing village and a place where they uh, dive for sponges uh, just about 30 to 40 minutes north of Tampa. It's a lovely yeah. place. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, you know, I want to stand up for my hometown here. Anyway, Eden Grinchpan, welcome to Mr. Media. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that's where we were getting at Okay. when we were referring to uh, Tampa. It was Tarpon Springs because that is where a lot of the Greek uh, population immigrated to for the sponge diving and for, um, you know, everything that that area gave them, which was beautiful, by the way. We did a segment there. We went to a Greek restaurant there in Tarpon Springs. Love it. Great food. Uh, you know, people are sensitive about their towns. <laughs> Absolutely. I get it. I get it. And I, but, sorry? I figure if I didn't stand up and make that point that people, people here who know me and live next door, for example, would be like, what are you, an idiot, Bob? You don't know where Tarpon <laughs> Springs is versus Tampa? It's okay. They're from out of town, but come on. So, yeah, we're trying to cover, you know, the area around the city as well. I got it. I got it. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so I got to ask you, after this career of, I mean, exotic locations, you've been around the globe, you've been looking for great things to eat. What brought you to the birthplace of the Columbia Restaurant, Outback Steakhouse, and Hooters? <laughs> well, you know, the show, I, I have traveled a lot, um, India, Southeast Asia, Europe. And um, when I moved to, I live in New York. When I moved to New York, I didn't want to let go of that um, love of exotic food and travel. And I found a way to do that by exploring, um, you know, immigrant uh, neighborhoods and different ethnic restaurants, and um, we were able to translate that to the on the show through all over America. And so on the show, we find people who are immigrating from all over the world, and we see how they recreate their culture and their customs through food right here. And we get to do that um, in every in a different city every week. Mm -hmm. So we did go to Tampa, and we found such a 
great multicultural um, movement happening there. And we were able to cover an authentic Trinidadian restaurant where we make doubles, which is this uh, street food that they serve there made with fried breads and this curried chickpea filling and tamarind sauce. And then we also got to make traditional strudel at this fantastic German restaurant. And then, as we said before, Tarpon Springs, we went and made the most delicious octopus and, you know, obviously Greek food. Mm -hmm. um, so we get to do that in, within every episode. And we cover six to seven different cultures. And the show is shot within a 24-hour time frame. So it's kind of like see what we're able to do within one day in one city in America. It's kind of like the New York Times does a, I think it's a 36 hours, a travel feature every couple of weeks where they show you from New York where you can go within 36 hours and all the things that you can do. It's the same type of thing. But I think that, you know, it's interesting when you hear about yet another uh, food show, a cooking show, a restaurant show. You know, you kind of reach the point where we have the Food Network, we have the Cooking Channel, there's the stuff on Bravo, there's uh, 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 Gordon Ramsay's stuff on BBC America and on Fox, and you think, okay, there's not another possible, there couldn't possibly be another idea for a food show. But this immigrant angle is a really clever one. I got to give you a lot of credit for that. You know, making that connection, it's a, it's a really great idea. Well, you know, it's so funny because um, I, I know a lot of people like myself, love exploring cities and, and finding those hidden gems in those little neighborhoods that you've never been to before. And it was so clear when we were doing that here in New York City, because I'm traveling, you know, we're going throughout the boroughs in New York. So we're going to Queens and Brooklyn, and we're finding, like, really traditional, authentic South Indian food, Korean food. And we, you know, you start talking to these people, and they start telling you, about where they're coming from, how they got here, and that's what we were able to do on the show Eat and Eats. And it's just so great that we're featuring cities that you wouldn't necessarily think would have such a large immigrant population. And that's what that's why we're picking cities like Nashville and Tampa and not major cities as well, because we just want to show that people are coming from all over the world and making cities all over America their home. And every city has their own cool little ethnic neighborhood that you can just kind of go out and explore on your own. Like everyone can take their own little adventure and it's right in their backyard. Right. I know yeah. a, a couple of years ago, I remember being surprised because it seemed like there was a sushi, su I can't even talk, a sushi restaurant on every corner in uh, the St. Petersburg and Tampa area. And that was mm -hmm. pretty exciting because yeah, we'd gone a long time here with nothing more than Cuban food and seafood because we're surrounded by water. And the last two or three, maybe four years, there's been this explosion of Vietnamese food. And that blows my mind because, I mean, I, when I was, uh, I think when I was 14, 15, uh, the Vietnam War just ended. And, and the idea that uh, after as, as uh, brutal and, and bitter as Americans were about Vietnam, the idea that we're now going and having boons and... and uh, you know, uh, all kinds of uh, Vietnamese food, and it's, uh, you know, and there's none of the jokes that would have been along 25 years ago. It's a, And w it amazes me is to see all these guys who were of that era, who would have been draft age, who may have been military at that time, and they're going to these places and eating, and it just, it just seems so unlikely. But, I mean, I love that stuff. <laughs> what can I say? You know, I think food is just such a great way to connect with people, and... You know, when when you start talking about food and you start experimenting and trying new foods, everything else kind of gets pushed aside. And there's this kind of just immediate connection that you have because you are uh, trying something new and you're also asking someone. Some It's a personal question. It's something very personal to them, someone that's serving you that food. Because, this, you know, we're eating dishes that are passed down from generation to generation. Like most of these people haven't gone to culinary school. These are recipes that their mother or their grandmother taught them. So there's so much personal significance to it. And that's another thing that we get to touch on because, you know, that's kind of what I'm using to connect with all these people. The second you start asking them questions about these dishes, then they open up and you hear about their lives and their stories and why they came here. And it's just so cool because America, you know, it's not just about burgers and fries. 
you know, a Not Mar- that there's anything wrong with burgers and fries. Oh, don't get me wrong. I love me a burger. I love me a burger and definitely the fries. But America is just so multicultural. Mm. And it's just great that we get to focus on that now and just showcase that in such a great, beautiful light. Is it a problem that we, um, now as, as we're eating more and more foods from more and more places around the world, that kind of immigrant foods, uh, um, but what we're also doing is we're importing food from all over the world, uh, fruits and vegetables, fish. And I mean, when I, when I f- first started eating sushi, I was astonished to learn that pretty much all of it is coming from, you know, the Sea of Japan or areas off of Japan. Um, is that a problem? Uh, are, are there, uh, do you have any issues with that part of it? I mean, uh, it's great to have the food, but uh, do you have any issue with the fact that this food is being transported so far and... You know, it's so hard to say because I know that if I went to a new country and someone told me that something from where I was from could come and be brought there, I'd be, you know, very happy because that is kind of just like a memory that, and, you know, something that's your own in that new space. So I can understand how people that are coming to a new country could really be happy about that. But I also know a lot of people that are Let's say, you know, you know a lot of Americans that are really into local and uh, seasonal foods and that you, you know, you're not the the carbon footprint and everything. You know, you have two different sides of it and um, to each of them, you know, like what, what, what works for you, I guess. I don't know. I enjoy seasonal local and I also enjoy having foods that I can try from other parts of the world. All right, that's fair. That's fair. Mm-hmm. So we're talking uh, about a show that that focuses on immigrant foods and immigrants who brought their food from other places. Uh, I have to say, looking at you, uh, you look as Anglo as I can imagine. Uh, but I, I'm going to ask anyway. Uh, do you have in your family? Uh, do you have immigrant roots? Are you from your family from somewhere else? Yeah. Well, I, when you trace back, both my grandmothers are Romanian, huh? and both my grandfathers are Polish. Wow. Yeah. So I don't, well, you know, just life. And, um, uh, yeah. So I don't really know. I, I love, I've never really tried Romanian food. I did. My mother raised me on this dish called mumbiga, which is, I think that's Romanian, but it's like polenta with cottage cheese, like so simple (laughs) and like full on, like that's like comfort food. Uh, so anytime I eat polenta, I'm like, oh, mom. But, uh, yeah, no, I don't know that much about the uh, my Romanian and Polish heritage. I do love Polish food, but I guess that's something I need to go and, and venture out and discover. I think we need, I think we need an episode f- focused on your own uh, uh, roots that way. I think that would my, be... My gypsy roots. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, let me come back to Tampa for a minute. So what did you have that you liked? And was there anything that you had that you, you know, didn't like? You know, I have to say the food, Tampa is actually one of my favorite episodes. I had such a blast. There's so much character to that city. And I think we really were able to showcase that in the episode. And we went to this fantastic Colombian late night spot where we got Colombian burgers that they sell traditionally on the streets in Colombia, which I knew nothing about. And they loaded this burger up. Like, I can't even tell you. It was... I. It was the size of my head, literally. <laughs> and so when I took a bite out of it, it was like all over my face, but I enjoyed every second of it. So we made Colombian burgers and patacon, and that, that was fantastic. And we also went and, um, as I said before, we tried the beautiful traditional um, apple strudel. Mm-hmm. And um, I also got to try on a little, I, I think it's called dindel which is this traditional German uh, beautiful outfit dress. And the man that was I, I was with, um, sorry, that was serving us wore later hosen, which I was like, I'm so in Germany right now. It's amazing. Um, but that's just to name a few. You know, we also, we also covered um, seven other cities uh, in America. For instance, we went to um, uh, San Diego, where I tried traditional South African street food called bunny chow that actually comes from Durban, South Africa. And it's just like, it was the coolest thing. You know, they take a loaf of bread, sorry, half a loaf of bread, they hollow it out. So they take the middle out, then they stuff the bread with 
chicken curry, take the thing, like the, the inside of the bread, which they call the plug, smear it in the sauce, place it on top, and then like three people eat that like on the street. Like it's like full on street food. It was one of the best things I've had um, and so different. And you got that in San Diego. San Diego. And we also went, this is one of my favorites, we went to a Norwegian supper club. I know, crazy. And we tried traditional Nor- Norwegian lamb stew. And that, you know, that those are just two segments that we covered in San Diego because it's great. You know, you get so much diversity within each episode because we're going to at least six to seven different um, cultures mm-hmm. within one city. Uh, another example would be we went to Salt Lake City and we went to this farmer's market where we tried incredible Congolese food wait Where, wait salt lake city the whitest city in america Salt lake city utah my friend and and you got congolese food huh yeah we tried she it was great because she actually brought in this smoker that she got made in in texas and brought it over to salt lake and she had smoked whole tilapia that she marinated in all these incredible herbs and spices and then in the smoker she put cherry chips and apple chips and also some more seasoning. And she smoked it for around an hour and served it with this incredible habanero sauce called Pili Pili sauce mm. and fried plantains. And we just ate that at an open green market in Salt Lake City. Wow. Just because it was there. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's amazing. It's now, amazing. Well, I, can I say that you really would have to do all that to make tilapia taste interesting? You know, I, it was so funny because I usually, tilapia is not really one of my favorite fishes, fish, uh, but this was one of the best, I swear, it was one of the best whole fish preparations um, I've ever had and enjoyed. It was so good, and it was so succulent. So... If you're in Salt Lake City, Mama Africa is where you need to head. All right. I'll remember that. I'll take yeah. note of it. I'll come yeah. back here and, and rewatch the video just in case I forget the name. Um, <laughs> what, uh, so how does, a, how does a city and a restaurant in a city rise to the level of interest of the producers of Eat and Eats? Uh, are these places that you've been before or, you know, is there staff that's going and checking it out? I'm assuming you're not waiting till the last minute to actually arrive and then go, oh, let's go there and let's go there and let's go there. Oh, no, we have a whole crew of people uh, working here on on the show, just researching different cities. Not only are we looking for the communities that are within each city, but we're looking for also specific restaurants. It can be just one restaurant, one family from that country that we can feature as well. And, you know, we do look for amazing food, but I think the best part about this show are the people and so we are, you know, we're calling people, we're, speak to them, we're speaking to them, we're listening to their stories, we're talking to them about what they've brought with them and what they have here in America. And that's what we base our, our show around. So that's the most important. We're talking to people and just getting to know them. And that's how we do our research. Okay. So, uh, you know, I mentioned uh, in the introduction uh, this great uh, seven-minute, 52-second uh, kind of a highlight reel of, uh, of yours. Um, what I wondered is, I don't know that much about uh, what you were doing before you got the Cooking Channel show. For example, the, the clips that I watched, um, they, were, they were not of the same high quality, uh, let's say. They, <laughs> they were, were fun. Hand- <laughs> it was a handheld camera. I, I, okay, I suspected as much, yeah. Little it, one. Mostly noticeable just in the audio more than anything. The video actually was very good, but um, I'll tell my friend that she filmed, she fil- and also my dad. My dad and my friend filmed those little segments, so I'll, I'll pass on the uh, compliments. Well, so how uh, how do you go from that to uh, the show on uh, the Cooking Channel? Well, you know, I when I was backpacking through India, I actually had an opportunity to. Um, I was volunteering at an orphanage, and they had a cafe there that was not being run. And I just graduated from culinary school, so I decided what's the best way to give my, you know, to help out would be to try and reopen it and help them have a running cafe. Um, So I did. And actually, my dad called me one day and was like, buy a camera. You have to take this. Like, on me. You have to. 
So I did, and I taped it, and it was just such an incredible experience shopping in the markets in India and working with the children in the kitchen and putting everything together and being a first time. Like, I was 21 years old trying to put this all together. So, um, And then after that, I just kind of kept taping different travels and working on when I was traveling through Israel and traveling to different parts of the world, and that's what you were seeing. It was all my travels and... Um, we kind of cut it down to a little real, but um, that's really how the show came to be because I have such a love for travel and people and food and cultures. Mm -hmm. And when I moved to America, we found a way to uh, translate that. And that's by exploring all these different cities and trying all these different kinds of foods right here in America. So did the cooking channel find you or did you find them? Um, it was, um, they, it was mutual. It was, you know, I, 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 I put a reel together and uh, we sent it off into the world. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right. Um, why do you think you're succeeding at this? I mean, and, and I have to ask, do you think sex appeal has anything to do with it? I... Um... Go ahead, answer that question. I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just... I, it's so funny because... The one thing I'm just trying to do is just be myself and enjoy. I'm doing exactly the same thing I was doing before the cameras were rolling. Mm -hmm. So that's just what um, the goal is on this show is to just enjoy ourselves, enjoy myself, meet people, and just, you know, stay true to who we are. Okay. So we have the uh, – I want to take a minute before we uh, wrap up. Uh, we have the good fortune. You're actually in your own kitchen. I this is well, I'm working at my desk, aka my kitchen table. Yep. So. Um, and as you said, notice before, yes, that would be the kitchen aid <laughs> right behind me, yeah. getting ready. And Who I, knows? And I, I, I love I love the window on your own world right behind you. That's wonderful. Can you <laughs> <laughs> can you show us uh, just a little bit of what's uh, what's there in the room with you? Yeah, I'll show you a little bit. Okay, I have to apologize because this is so last minute. <laughs> I swear I'm neater than this. So oh, this is nobody this is. is. This is actually my friend, my friend's apartment. I'm living in it right now. Okay. Uh, but I've been living here for a couple of years. So this is like my little um, uh, island area with my bowls and my spices. Sorry, actually, over there I have like you know olive oil, vinegar, salt, pepper. I have a Moroccan tea set, obviously. Well, actually, that's not mine. That's my friend's, but I'm going to pretend it's mine. <laughs> okay. Um, a bunch of my cookbooks that I love. And um, she actually, she's really into decorating. So, you know, she has her cute little mugs. Oh, very right? nice. Yeah. And uh, here's where all the knives are. They're all, like, disheveled. There's usually a bunch more. Okay. I have a collection of knives. I don't know. If <laughs> I, I, I would hope any. so. Yes. Um, here is the oven yeah. with like my favorite, the Le Creuset. I'm obsessed with these. Really? Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, like nice. they're so great. Oh yeah. We're, great we're, dealing, we're dealing with a proper oven here. We got a nice, big, beautiful oven, which of course is very important to me as that. well. And I love to bake. Great tea kettle. And by the way, with the knives, I would expect you to have a proper set of knives because you know, if that day ever came that you did, you know, like Top Chef or something, you know, you want Padma to be able to say, please pack your knives and go home. Oh, that's true. Right? That's very yeah, true. Have that. Are there dirty dishes? I got to ask. Oh, my God. Of course. Please. You want to see? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, and look at cl classic old sink. Look at that. Oh, I know this. Well, that sink, obviously, it's this. I'm living in a really um, old, beautiful apartment. It's very industrial. So that's why there's a big, cool. crazy, cool sink there. Well, we, won't uh, t we won't tell your friend that we saw dirty dishes. Oh, it's okay. That'll be oh, our secret. Here, I'll show you this. This I love. And as I'm properly putting it back, so it doesn't look too crazy, okay. but this is my spice drawer. Oh, neat. Which is like my complete obsession. I have, I collect spices. I collect two things. I collect, actually, no, it's a, I collect three. I collect knives, spices, and cook books oh cool so let, let me ask you about the spices then for a second so uh is there any spice that you will not go without that you have to have with you that would surprise someone i don't know if it would surprise someone i think it would be like i'm obsessed with cumin 
I love cumin. I love the flavor it gives. It's so warm and earthy. Mm. I love cinnamon. Cinnamon, cumin, um, uh, turmeric. I think those are just like they're, they're the obvious. Like we need those. Those are just those are spices we need in our lives. Um, and I also love exotic spices that you can't find usually. I love sumac, mm -hmm. um, and I love za'atar. Uh, what else do I have in there? I just, I just, I have beautiful Nigella seeds. You know, we, I like to play around. I, I have friends over that are like, "What am I eating?" <laughs> And I'm like, just enjoy. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I tell them and they learn something new, which is really cool. That's why I, I love having dinner parties for that reason. Well, it was very nice of you uh, to unplanned uh, take us around the kitchen. That was very cool. And it, <laughs> Pleasure. One of, those, one of those great moments that really illustrates why the video is such a cool tool for this, this type of thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is a lot of fun. This is uh, it's nice. So at, at this point, as we're wrapping up the interview, I would normally ask my guests, What's next? But in your case, I want to ask, where's next? Where are you going next, either for the show or just for fun or, you know, for work? Um, Friday, this Friday is our Phoenix episode, um, which is such a beautiful episode. We actually visit um, a reservation and talk to, learn about the Pima and the Maricopa tribes. Um, and uh, also we go to this really cool Bosnian bakery where we make, like from scratch, phyllo dough. Um, so I'm really excited for this episode and pretty much I'll just be hanging out in New York City, trying new foods and blogging about it and, uh, learning about different cultures right here. <laughs> Very cool. Well, yeah. uh, folks, listen, you can, uh, you can see Eden Grinspan, uh, host of Eden Eats, uh, every Friday at 10 PM on the cooking channel. She is also, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, is, there a, is there a website, too, that you want folks to have? Um, no, right now there's just a blog, Facebook page, and Twitter, and they're all Eat and Eats. Okay. And you can you can also look her up at cookingchannel.com. You can find yeah, her page. Yeah. And there's uh, there's also links there to uh, recipes from the shows. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, it was interesting that you can actually sort them by cooking time. So if you have 15 minutes or you have 22 minutes, you can find a recipe from the shows that will fit, which is kind of cool. Um, well, uh Eden Grinspan, thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Media, today. Thank you so much for having me. Great speaking with you. Same here. Thanks. You can see and hear almost a thousand Mr. Media interviews by visiting our main site, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. Or check out the more than 200 video interviews on the Mr. Media radio site on YouTube. And I'd sure appreciate if you'd show some love from Mr. Media's advertisers, including Stitcher. Apple named Stitcher a top five news app of 2011. It's a free mobile app for your smartphone or tablet that lets you listen to your favorite shows and discover the best of news, entertainment, and sports on demand. You can listen whenever you want to to more than 5,000 shows, get customized recommendations, and discover what your friends are listening to. My own list of Stitcher favorites is pretty eclectic. I start my day with an hour of MSNBC's Morning Joe with Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski. Then it's the latest two-minute update from the Onion News Network. After that, I'll listen to WTF with Mark Marin. Here's The Thing with Alec Baldwin, HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher, and excerpts from E's Chelsea Lately and The Soup with Joel McHale. Also in regular rotation on my Stitcher playlist, The BS Report with ESPN's Bill Simmons, the TechCrunch headlines, and the Don Geronimo Show. The latest episodes of each show, whether originating from broadcasts, cable TV, radio syndication, or podcasts, are continuously updated. Stitcher is a free app for your iPhone, iPad, Kindle, Fire, BlackBerry, Droid, and more. And show your support of Mr. Media by getting, did I mention it's free? The app at stitcher.com slash mrmedia. That's stitcher.com slash mrmedia. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. We're also supported by Audible. Check out Audible's 30-day trial membership and download the audiobook version of the book everyone's been talking about, Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. Sign up for your free trial today at audible.com slash radio. Again, audibletrial.com slash radio. And finally, if you need a disc jockey for a wedding, bar mitzvah, corporate event, or just a big old party, please consider calling 1-800-DIAL-DJs, the party authority, for all your party entertainment needs. 
you can call 1-800-DIAL-DJs or go to their website, 1-800-DIAL-DJs.com, and tell them Mr. Media sent you. And thanks for listening.